All right, we are going to talk about something called work energy theorem. So we mentioned before that energy is defined as the ability to do work. In order for me to form some sort of physical work, I have to have energy because that energy is then going to be transferred into the work that was done. Or I could say the work that I did is responsible for the change in energy that I experience. The work that I perform on an object is responsible for the change in energy that the object experiences. And so this is what we call the work energy theorem. So we stated in a previous lesson that both work and energy are measured in joules. And at the time we said that they were definitely related, but we needed more information to know what exactly makes them synonymous. And so here is the missing piece. Work is equal to delta E. Remember, delta means change, and the change in anything is going to be final minus initial. So when we are talking about potential energy, this is going to be mass times gravity times height. If my object moves to a new height, it has a new amount of energy. So if we are talking about how much work was done to change the amount of energy, we are gonna take whatever that initial potential energy and the final potential energy values are, and we're simply going to subtract them using the final minus initial format. When we're dealing with kinetic energy, this is based off of the object's motion. So it's one half mv squared. So if we're calculating how much work is done in order to change the amount of kinetic energy an object has, then this is going to be final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy. Now, these changes in energy can be either positive or negative. I can do positive work because my object gains energy. I can do negative work because the object loses energy. So when we are talking about energy, that is going to be just the quantifying piece of it. That's going to be a scalar value where we are saying, here is how much energy the object has. But when we talk about work, work can either be positive or negative. Positive work is going to result in an increase in energy or a positive change in energy. Negative work is going to result in a decrease in energy, or we could say the object experienced a negative change in energy. So here is our first example. We have a box that is sitting on the ground, and the box has zero joules of energy here on the floor. Now, if I take this box and I, I lift it, or raise it up and set it on a shelf, now the box has potential energy because it is located on this shelf. So this is something that we talked about previously in just understanding this concept of potential energy being based on height. Now, if we were being asked questions about the work energy theorem, we're gonna have to be able to make the connection between the variables that we are given and the variables that the, um, I'm sorry, the variable that the question is asking us for. So in this case, if they tell us that the box is sitting on a shelf that is eight meters tall, and then they tell me in the problem that the mass of my box, <clears throat> excuse me, if they tell me in the problem that the mass of my box is two kilograms, I now have enough information to calculate what is that potential energy value simply using P equals MGH. So eight meters tall, two kilogram box, this is going to be two times 9.8 times eight. And so this is going to give me 156.8 joules. So what this means is that my box went from zero joules to 160 joules. Well, where did that energy come from? Because energy is not created nor destroyed. It didn't just magically appear. What happened is that I performed work whenever I lifted the box, and the work that I performed is responsible for the change in energy that the box just experienced. So we are going to say work is equal to the final potential energy minus the initial potential energy. 
So I'm going to take 156.8 minus zero. I performed positive work on the box because the object increased in potential energy. Now, you might have a question where they ask you how much work was done and you're given energy information. As long as you can identify the initial and the final energies, you just simply subtract the two and that's how much work is done. Now, if the question said that I started on the shelf and then I moved the box so that it was now on the floor, this work would be, once again, final minus initial, where this would be a final potential energy of zero minus the initial potential energy. So that would be negative work because the box decreased in energy value. Now, what we've done already is answered lots of questions about lifting objects. So let's go back to the idea of um, the work that I did to lift the box. If we are calculating work using force times displacement, we've previously stated that the weight of the object, which is calculated by mass times gravity, is going to give me the force that I'm using to lift it. Again, this is assuming it's being lifted at a constant speed. This displacement, if it is a vertical displacement, could be represented with an H for height. So I very well could, and honestly, I should, have already been using the formula of mass times gravity times height in order to calculate the amount of work done. Now again, work is not equal to energy. Work is equal to the change in energy. So this ends up being a true statement because in this case, my final height would have been the eight meters where my initial potential energy would have been zero, okay? If I had an object that was maybe on a shelf that was already two meters high, I would need to figure out what that potential energy at two meters was, and I would subtract that as the initial, okay? So here's the idea. Work is equal to the change in energy. So for this example, I performed 160 joules of work on the box to raise it from the floor to the shelf. So this means the box experienced a change in energy of 160 joules. Now, this is a statement, or um, the work energy theorem is a statement that is true for both potential and kinetic energy. If I have a golf ball that is sitting on the floor, this golf ball is initially at rest and therefore it has zero joules of kinetic energy. If I'm told that the mass of this golf ball is 0.8 kilograms, and the boy hits the ball, and now it is flying through the air with a velocity of five meters per second, well, conceptually, I should understand that the object now has kinetic energy, and I'm gonna calculate that by doing one half mv squared, where my kinetic energy is going to be half of 0.8 times five squared, which is going to give me 10 joules. Okay, so this is something that I should easily be able to calculate. So I need you to recognize that the object gained energy, the amount of energy the object has changed. Work was done onto the golf ball in order to change the amount of kinetic energy it has. So in order to figure out how much work we did, we would take the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. So final being 10, initial being zero. So we did a positive 10 joules of work onto the golf ball in this particular example. Now again, I want you to always put in all of the variables. So final minus initial, do not leave out those zeros. Not every question is going to have a final or a, an initial um, value of zero. 
but I wanna make sure that you get in the habit of recognizing all of your variables, and if it's zero, it still needs to be accounted for. If we had an object that was already moving, and then we bring the object to a stop, in that case, the final velocity would be zero, therefore the final kinetic energy would be zero and negative work would be done. Now if we are thinking in terms of what the word work means, once again, work is force times displacement. If I do work that opposes the object's motion, this is a negative force, this is a negative acceleration because the object is going to lose speed, and so therefore it should be a decrease in kinetic energy. So whether we're taking our kinetic energy change and using that to calculate work, or we're taking work and using that to calculate the change or maybe an, a specific initial or final kinetic energy, all of the vocabulary, all of these relationships, it still should make perfect sense how we can switch back and forth from one to the other. If this problem had told me that I had um, a boy who applies 7.8 newtons of force onto the golf ball in order to send it 1.3 meters, I could calculate how much work the boy's golf club did on the ball by just doing force times displacement. Then if the question asks me, what is the kinetic energy that the golf ball has now? Well, I'm still using this relationship and instead of solving for work, I would be solving for energy. So these are the types of connections that you guys are going to be responsible for understanding. The big challenge, um, number one, is just comprehending and just accepting that the change in energy is the same value as the work. The second challenge is just kind of in general, can you make those connections? Do you understand how to take the variables that we've given you and the variable that they are asking for and create a connection if it's not one of our basic equations? So we are dealing with work energy theorem today Again, the work done is responsible for the change in energy.